What's good, y'all? Welcome to an episode of Buzz Boys. I'm your host, Terry. And uh, tonight, man, the Hornets definitely gave us a thrill. Definitely a roller coaster game, a uh, roller coaster of emotions. Um, the Hornets, who at one point were up 23 points, ended up down five and end up to come back to win by five um, in a 138-133 win over the Toronto Raptors at home. And this was definitely, you know, a cardiac cats moment. Um, just something that this team has done for years where we just can never blow a team out. We could never just win by 30 and just put this, the bench in. and It always got to be something, bro. And LaMelo was going crazy, you know, 12 points in literally probably a minute or two, like crazy. And um, Charles Lee sat him down and, uh, you know, that proved to be a mistake. As uh, pretty much soon as that happened, you know, the tide turned for the Raptors. And it's going to be some growing pains. You know, Charles Lee's a first-time coach. He's going to do things where he's experimenting and, and it works. And he's going to do things where he experiments and it doesn't. Um, tonight, we saw him, you know, do something where every single time the opponent was shooting free throws, it seemed like. Charles Lee would call a timeout in the middle of the free throws and just, like, kind of try to ice them like they do in, in football. You ice the kicker. And they missed plenty of times. Like, it worked. It definitely worked. So, um, you know, just, just certain stuff where, you know, he's going to try different things in different lineups. Uh, you know, call a timeout in certain situation. Don't call a timeout in certain situation. Let the team play. You know, you know, we, we dealing with a first-year coach, so it's going to be some, some things where, you know, at the end of the day, even he's a little inexperienced, even though he spent plenty of years in that second chair as an assistant. It's different when you got the reins and you and you know, you driving the car. So it is what it is. Um ultimately we came out with the win, so that's what I'm happy about. And it was a lot of unsung heroes and, and you know, people that you wouldn't expect that lifted us to this win. You got three players with twenty plus points and neither one of them are named LaMelo Ball, Brandon Miller, or Miles Bridges. Um so that's something that, you know, you wouldn't have seen coming. Um, Nick Richards, 24 points, 14 rebounds. Trey Mann, 27. Cody Martin, 25. I mean, that's miraculous, bro. Like, it just shows the depth of this team. And something that I talked about all summer where I looked at this roster and I said, healthy, bro, we are going to be a problem. And, you know, a lot of people, you know, they had their uh, expectations and their record predictions. Mine, you know, have been 45, 50 wins the entire time. And, uh, you know, ultimately, are you going to be a 45, 50 win team if you're giving up 133 points to a team like this? No, you're not. And I'm going to acknowledge that. The defense, putrid. How you let Toronto Raptors score 133 points, missing pretty much their whole team? I don't know. And that is disgusting. So even though we got a win, embarrassing. You know, you win about 23 points, so you were doing what you were supposed to do. And then, you know, just took your foot off the gas. So it's going to be a learning moment, and we'll see how we how we uh, bounce back and adjust for that because we got some real teams coming to town. I know we got the Celtics. I know we got the Knicks. Um, yeah, so it'll be interesting to see how we step up, how we handle that. Anyways, um, before I get into the video, I just want to say uh, I did go to the Miami game. Uh, I did record, and ultimately, by the time I got back home, I wasn't able to, to you know, record this part and um, edit it. I had to go to work the next morning. I got off work. I'm tired. Uh, you know, had to work the next day. So, it just, I just didn't end up getting a chance to actually, you know, do what I want to do and be able to edit and get it out to y'all in a timely manner. So, I just ended up kind of having to let that go. Um but yeah, I did go to the Miami game and I, I and uh I, I was recognized by somebody. Uh you know, I don't want to mess up your name, sir. So I'm just say Mr. L because that's the part that I remember. So it is nice to meet you and uh, I appreciate your support. It means a lot. Um and I do apologize for forgetting your last name because you introduced yourself as L, you know, blank. I wanna say Johnson, but I'm not sure, so I don't want to suspect you. So I just want to say, you know, nice to meet you, Mr. L. Thank you for watching the show. Uh, it means a lot to me. Anybody else, y'all see me at a Hornets game or just wherever, out in public, man, come say what's up to me. It means the world to know that i got, you know, real supporters, man. It means everything to me. All right. Enough of that. Moving on. Getting into the game, man. Um, Melo's distribution was, you know, on display as soon as the game started. Uh, you know, had a nice, beautiful pass to Miles, and um, ultimately, you know, Miles having a cold night after, you know, 
And, you know, it's just a layup. You know, it just kind of was surprising. You know, he scored first, and then it just went downhill. Um, and Josh Green came out, hit the corner three, and, you know, every time Josh hits the corner three, it's just like, this is what he's here for. Hit the open shots, play defense. That's all we need, bro. That's all we need. He did that tonight. Um, and then Josh Green comes down, has a lob to Nick Richards. So you just see where it's like, okay, this team already has chemistry, already is getting out and running together and already, you know, keeping their head up, knowing that the ball is coming. So that's what happens when you move the ball. Everybody's ready for it. Everybody's active, passing lanes, all of that. Get out and run, do, you know, do we like to do it as a Hornets team, man. Um, and, oh, yeah. So, so Josh had the block. Um and then he saved it under his own basket. And uh, that led to the Raptors coming down and scoring, bro. And, you know, that's happened a few times this year where, you know, a play just gets broken up or whatever happens. And it's like, you know, the block is nice, but then you come down and, and then you try to save it later. And once you get down the court and, and it's like, we got some saving the ball under our own basket, bro. It's like literally fundamentals 101. You don't do stuff like that. It's okay to take the dead ball turnover so at least you can get back and get your defense set versus you save the ball to them. You're literally generating a fast break for them. You're out of bounds trying to save the ball. So you literally just give to that team a four-on-five fast break. Well, I should say five-on-four fast break. And we got to stop doing that because we've done it at least one time in every game where we try to save the ball and boom. And it's something kind of like with a rookie quarterback where you say you don't have to try to make the spectacular play every time you don't have to try to make the crazy throw every time it's okay to just throw it out of bounds sometimes and you just take that l on that play and you keep moving on so yeah you know we got to learn that because i'm kind of tired of seeing that happen but i respect you know trying to make something out of nothing but sometimes there really is just nothing there um trey comes down has the n1 you know like bro it was so many just spurts in this game where you know a player would just take over for a few minutes and that's ultimately what got us to win bro uh, and we still played team basketball, but it was the times where, you know, we were just hot, bro, but the ball was still moving. Um, Trey has the and one. Then he comes down, has the three. Um, and then Tijan had the block, um, but appeared to not credit him with a block. So I guess that that was a steal that they credit him with, but it looked like a block to me. Um, and then Trey comes down, has the floater. So it's just like in that first quarter, he definitely was the guy, you know, putting the ball in the basket for us. LaMelo did not score in the first quarter. He didn't even shoot the ball at all. So, you know, Trey definitely was our engine in that first quarter as far as putting the ball in the basket. But, you know, LaMelo was distributing. Um, and then, um, what does this say? Oh, yeah, Trey can't be stopped. He just, like, he literally was just hooping. Like, that That first quarter, it, it just summed up what he was going to do. He already had 10 points. Um, it, it just summed, it just summed his, his game up. You already knew what was going to happen. Um, he was just on fire, bro. And it's like, I love Trey. I, I'm so happy that we resigned him. I hate that we didn't extend him because we're going to have to, you know, break the bank. We're going to have to break the bank. Simple as that. Um, and then Grant comes down and hits the buzzer beater at the end of the first quarter. And, uh, you know, all the momentum was in our favor, bro. Auto moments was in our favor. Everything was going good. Um, excuse me. Parch, man. Second quarter opens up. Nick starts off offensive rebound, gets the put back. And I got to give props to Nick Richards. I mean, I know he gets a lot of flat. He gets killed, bro. But, you know, you give him the minutes, he's going to give you a double-double. He just does. He's going to give you a double-double. He's going to give you some blocks. I mean... 24 points, 14 rebounds, four blocks, a steal, even four assists. I mean, 10 for 14 from the field, you know, what, hey, what do you, what more do you want? Now, he had a minus 15 plus minus, <laughs> but ultimately, you know, I'm going to take that. I'm going to take that 24 and 14, dog. You know, is he going to do that often? No, but he's going to at least give you a little double-double even when he gets the minutes. Um very social backup. Also, where the fuck is Mark Williams? That's another conversation for another day. Um, Mellow to Nick to Josh on the corner three. And that's where it's like, 
Nick Richards has four assists. He's playing his role. He knows where he's supposed to be in these actions where people are moving around and he's making the right reads. Now, yes, will he fumble the ball every now and then? Yes. But ultimately, you know, he's making the right reads, doing what he's supposed to do. And, and you know, the offense is flowing, bro. And I'm honestly a little concerned with just Mark being gone for so long. What does the chemistry look like when Mark comes back? What does it look like? Now, ultimately, you know, Mark was healthy this summer, so we think, you know, apparently the back thing hasn't been an issue for a while after the season ended. So, you know, I'm pretty sure that Mark got in plenty of work this summer, but training camp, preseason, he missed that. So, you know, we'll we'll just, we'll see when he's dropped in what it looks like, but it is a little bit of concern. Um, and then anyway, um... Josh comes down, gets the block. Uh, it goes off a Raptors arm. They give him the ball back. Referees cheating, you know, I don't know. Uh, but you know, it was a good block, and, and that's what you bring Josh in for, man. Um, uh, he had two blocks tonight, <laughs> you know, in 22 minutes. And it's like, bro, and I'm surprised he only played 22 minutes. Uh, and I wonder, you know, if he's still on a little bit of a minutes restriction. Uh, albeit he's not playing back to backs and all of that, so you know I, I wonder if he's still in minutes restriction. But at the end of the day, you know his impact is felt immediately. He's coming in, and he's doing what he's brought here to do: play defense, knock down threes. And uh, I respect it. I love it. Um, let me see. <laughs> Nick came down, had had the little floater, and it's like he bro, he had some touch. He had some shots tonight where it was touch. A few bounces and then few floaters off the backboard, few just little teardrop, little baby hooks. Like, I got to give Nick his props tonight, bro. He was hooping. Deadass. He was he was hooping tonight. Uh, with nine minutes and seven seconds left in the second quarter, Melo comes down, has the L1. And um, that was like his first shot attempt of the night. It might have been his second. I think he missed. He came down. He had a little pull-up on the right elbow. He missed it. So this is his second shot attempt. But, I mean, it's kind of crazy for Mel to have a second shot attempt with nine minutes left in the second quarter. So, you know, it was just a characteristic night for him. But we still managed to win the game, which is just that much more validating. Um, albeit, I know who we were playing, a hurt Raptors team. But, I mean, to be able to overcome the momentum of a blown lead, it still means something. And we're still down two starters ourselves. We can never forget that. Um, so, yeah, it was nice. Um, and... <laughs> Nick comes down and has the end one. And it was one of them plays where literally, like, LaMelo wanted the ball back. And somehow, you know, Nick just has it. He's fumbling it. He gets it back. And then he gets the end one. And LaMelo was literally like, fuck it, bro. That was funny. Like, it was it was definitely funny because you just see LaMelo like, hey, bro. And they, uh, it went in. Um, then after that. That's when Melo starts to get hot. He hits the first three. Few seconds later, a few plays later, he comes down, hits another one. The second one is the one footer. Like, he just, his bag is crazy. Dude. Like, Melo's insane. The way Hoops is insane. Um, and he comes out, hits the third three. And it's just like, yo, what the fuck is going on? Um, and this is where it's like he just manufactures his own runs. And we were so hot. Josh Green comes down, makes a three from Curry. And uh, Trey has the floater, gives him 12. LaMelo comes out at this point, and they did start to go to they, go on their run, man. Um, and uh, I, I I didn't like to see that. You know, you're up 23. You did cut to five before halftime. Uh, you know, Melo shouldn't have came out in that second quarter like that. Mm. Excuse me, man. I've been up since six this morning. Ah, But, yeah, man, you know, plays were being made, but Ultimately, you know, we gave that lead back, man. Um, an important milestone, uh, TJ has his first career points, man, and he worked for an off-the-offensive rebound, gets his own bucket. You would think that they would be assisted or spoon-fed, but nah, man, he gets his own bucket. Um, and I'm pretty happy with the miss that he gave us tonight. You know, it's a building block, but, I mean, in 16 minutes, three points, three rebounds, three assists, a steal, uh, plus 11, plus minus, um, you know, and you can take that. You can take that. Um, 
and ultimately, you know, do something with it. Um, I mean, obviously, you would like to see more points, but I mean, he was one for three. And it's like at the end of the day, he played his role. He got steals. He got out there, ran, and passed the ball. And I mean, he did what he was supposed to do. Three, 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 a steal. I'll take that, bro. Fuck it. Like, at the end of the day, he's out there affecting the game positively. The scoring is going to come. And, and the whole thing I talked about with Tijan was, you know, what does he look like when his shot isn't falling? What can he bring? And that's the whole thing that I talked about so much during the preseason. Yeah, he's making all these crazy threes, but I know that's an aberration. When that stops, what does he do? And I think he showed us a little bit tonight that he can still affect the game when the three-pointer isn't just automatic and, and, and dropping crazy. And uh, that, that to me, meant a lot. I want to see him continue to play uh, if the opportunity is there. With Mitchell out of the rotation, it looks like, you know, the minutes should still be there for a little bit. Once Brandon comes back, you know, he might get minutes at the two, three, you know, and it could just, everything could just kind of get redistributed. Uh, but for right now, while he's getting the minutes, man, I'm happy to see him out there and uh, hope to, you know, can see him cont to continue and help the team. Excuse me. I don't know what just happened. Um, but anyway, you know, like I said, it was just nice to see him score his first career points. Um, moving on, Trey. Still hot. Hits the three. 15 points going into halftime. Real hooper, bro. Real hooper. And where I don't know where we would be without Trey Man tonight. Because he kept us afloat for a long time. Even before. Oh, man. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Even before guys like, you know, Cody got going. Um, Nick and one. As soon as we started the third quarter, um, Nick... Once again, has the put back. <laughs> like, his fingerprints are all over this game, bro. Um, Melo hits Curry for the three. And, um, you know, I feel like we started to gain a little bit of momentum in that third. But it was still where, like, at this point, why is the game even this close? You're still asking yourself that. Why is the game this close? Um, and, you know, Miles hit a three, kind of, you know, Broke his ice a little bit. Then he comes down. He gets the big block. And, uh, you, you know, I was kind of hoping that would reinvigorate him. And he would kind of do something. But it never really happened. Uh, he made two free throws after that. And that was pretty much, you know, it. Uh, you know, and I think Miles going to get back on his feet. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, it's the start of the season. Some guys are going to start off hot and cool down. Some guys are going to start off cool and, and, you know, throughout the season heat up. Um and you know, I'm not worried about it. I'm really not. I think he'll be I think he'll be perfectly fine. Um starting to monitor, but ultimately I think he'll be good, bro. Um but yeah, in that third quarter, man, the leads evaporated. Uh the Raptors able to cut it to one, you know, and then Grant comes with the with the game tying three eighty two eighty two. Um Cody with the lead, taking 385, 84. But, I mean, ultimately, we let the lead completely evaporate. It was gone. We were losing. Um, you know, and that's when Cody and Grant just kind of got us through that. Because, like, when we started losing, LaMelo's on the bench. So, you know, it was just Grant, Cody, Trey. Um, Cody had the lay, and it was something where, like, he kind of, like, did it in and out, lost the ball, and just was kind of able to scoop it up. Um to give us the lead, then Trey comes down, has the tough lay. His layup package is so tough. Um, Melo come down, has the floater. Melo come down, has the three. We're at tied 96-96. And um, I feel like everything just kind of popped. It was a big pop from the crowd, um, especially when Melo does something relatively clutch. It was a big pop from the crowd. Tied the game, 96-96. And it was such a high-scoring game to, you know, and... Miami, I mean, playing Miami, you know, the total was like 108 to like 10. It was a low, way more low scoring game than this, uh, where it's almost 100 100 going into the, the, the fourth quarter. Um, Melo got the steal. Trey comes down, hits the three. Uh, Cody hits the three from Grant to push it to 103 96 going into the fourth. 
and that's where you know the momentum was on our side and, and the wind was definitely blowing into our sails and we were good um and then start the fourth quarter grant three boom open you know wide open um metal tray for the three and um you know i just felt like you know the hive was alive and i wish i was at this game in this moment and i was off work today so i really could have fucked around and tried to go but you know it just is what it is um you know trey has the Allen iverson type layup like he came down he just like bro i love trey and i'm so glad we got him bro we got him for quarter fucking hayward <laughs> We got Trey Man for Gordon Hayward, bro. Like, oh man, it's gonna be the best thing to ever happen to our organization, bro. As far as trades, like, yo. Oh man. Um Damn. Oh yeah. Cody had the little scrambling, little midi. Um, kind of another play where Cody kind of loses the ball, he gets it back and then he scores, and it's just like what the fuck? But hey, bro, when you're having the type of night that he's having, you know, shit just starts to go in your favor. Um and Melo had an and one. It got overturned. They still gave him the points, though, I noticed. So it was just like, um, okay. Um, interesting to kind of see how that went. Um, but it is what it is. Um, Nick comes out. He has a block. He has the put back um, on the other end. And there was a play where, you know, I think this was in the fourth quarter where I think Grady Dick ended up scoring. But Nick had the block. He's fighting for the boards. Everybody's fighting down on the boards. And, like, they kept missing. The Raptors kept missing. But ultimately, we did, we couldn't clear it, and they ended up scoring. But, excuse me, it was a play that definitely stuck with me. That might have been in the third quarter. But it was a play that definitely stuck with me. And just showed, like, you know, we weren't disengaged from the game. Um, even when, you know, the scoreboard was looking a little different. Um, Nick came down, had the moving screen, and... It's like, bro, it's still 24. It's still 24, and Nick Richards still doesn't know how to set a proper screen. That's what drives me crazy. That's that's honestly the crazy thing that drives me just so crazy when it comes to Nick Richards, bro, is the moving screens. You think that's a rookie year thing, bro? It's year four, maybe five for Nick Richards, and he's still doing that shit, bro. <laughs> like, I think it's year four. I don't know. But it's like, bro, can you just stand still, please? He does it at least once a game. Like, that is the one thing where it's just like, bro, that shit is annoying. He try, he, he can be a little bit of a butter, a Butterfingers, too. But the offensive fouls, that shit is annoying, bro. Um, But, yeah, Curry comes down, draws the charge, and that's why I feel like we really had the momentum and stuff was really starting to, like, just, like, go our way. Like, we're winning this game. Um, Martin hits the clutch three. And uh, then he had to put back lay, and, and it was just literally like these guys really carrying us down the stretch. Like it was not Lamelo, it was not Miles. Like, bro, this game was won by Cody, Trey, um, Grant stepped up, and Nick. I mean, like this was role players winning this game for us, bro. Um, Nick had to end one. We had a shot clock violation like a few possessions after that and that shit pissed me off because at the end of the game with 50 seconds left you can't be having no shot clock violations bro i don't give a fuck i don't give a fuck they're pressing trapping i don't care what's going on you have to get a shot on the rim with 50 seconds left in a close game i don't care um that pissed me off um but ultimately though you know we started playing the free throw game and uh, Trey hit his clutch free throws. He hit two. We coming down. Um, and we giving up clutch lays. And that shit pissed me off. Davion Mitchell's coming down and getting layups. Grady Dick's coming down and getting layups. And it's like my... Bro, the defense. The defense ultimately, it, it just pissed me off, bro. You letting these teams come down and score and just keep the game possibly within reach. It pissed me off. Grant comes down, makes a free throw, ices the game. But it was definitely some things where the flaws were evident. And if we were playing any other team, this game might not have went the way it went in our favor record-wise. Um, ultimately, you know, we're going to have to tighten up to play the Celtics. Charles Lee, you know, playing the team he just came from. Going to be interesting to see how he matches up. Um, 
I think we play on Friday, so we got like one day's rest. Um, you know, we play on Friday. Hopefully, we can see some type of change to the injury report by then. But um, you know, it, it's no telling really. Um, you know, and then we it's back to back, so we play on Friday. We play again on Saturday. Then we got to go to Minnesota on that Monday, November 4th, and play the Timberwolves. So, hopefully, you know, Brandon Miller's black back by then because, you know, with Brandon back and his team playing the way it is, oh, man, we going to be a force to be reckoned with. And, you know, Mark, bro, I don't know. We need updates because I'm hearing that he's on the court doing on-court activities. But, you know, I think Eric Collins might have slipped up because he said he's not practicing. So if he's not practicing, what well, how's he on the court doing basketball activities? What's going on? Cause I heard that on the telecast tonight where he said Mark Williams not practicing. And it stuck with me like, I mean he's not practicing. I thought he was clear for basketball activities. What's the basketball activities if he's not practicing? I don't know, bro. I don't know. You know, I really honestly didn't think the smart thing was a concern. I I, I had took him at his word. He said it's not a problem. He said, you know, I'm not injury prone. I'm gonna be out there. Da, da, da. We you know, we're going into November now and you ain't playing, bro. Potentially not even practicing. What's going on? Dog, don't do this again. Anyways, I'm gonna wrap this up because I'm past my 25 minute mark that I really try to stay up under. And I'm tired, so I'm gonna edit this, get it out as fast as I can, and go to sleep. Um but yeah, man, I appreciate y'all. You know, it's amazing to see the channel grow. Literally, every chance I get, I re I'm refreshing, and I just see numbers going up, going up, going up, and almost every single aspect. So I just want to say I love y'all. If you're new to the family, welcome. And uh, if you're not, hit that subscribe button, turn the post notifications on, so y'all can see when I drop a banger like this. And anyways, I'll catch y'all on Friday, man. Peace.